In this video series I want to take my experience of teaching the A-level or pre-university materials topic and break it down into a short series of small, digestible, easy to understand chunks and hopefully have some fun along the way too. In this video we will cover the basis of the materials section of the syllabus. We'll cover topics like F equals KX, stiffness and what happens if you put springs in series and parallel. Let's start our whistle stop tour through the materials topic looking at Hooke's law and springs. So here's a bog standard kind of spring and in the second diagram we've added a force of F, a weight or something I guess, and in the third one we've got 2F. Now what you'll find is that the force in this case that you add on up to a certain point is proportional to the extension of the spring. Now extension is written in different ways as you float around on the internet. So you'll see it as X or X or even E sometimes. So what we're seeing here is that if we put a tensile force and the word tensile basically means stretching. So if we stretch the spring, the force is proportional to the extension. Well, you might think to yourself, well, that's terribly exciting. And I'd agree with you that it isn't really that exciting. But bear in mind, as with all things physics, that what we're doing is creating models that we can use to describe more interesting things. So we could consider the mass on the spring to be an atom and the bonds between atoms to be represented by the springs. Now that's getting more interesting because it leads us to understand how materials work. Anyway, back to the little formula there. Of course, you will remember that if ever you've got a proportional sign, you can chuck in a constant. And the constant here is known as the spring constant, sometimes written as SC, at least by me, to save time. Uh, force is newtons, length is meters, therefore the spring constant has the units of newtons per meter. Now the spring constant is a measure of how stiff a material is, and stiffness is a measure of how much force you have to put to stretch it. So this is telling us how stiff a material is. So we could continue this work and add 3f and 4f and 5f, and plot a graph of force against extension. And if you do that, you'll get something like this. So this is our first graph. This is a very graphy topic is materials. And we've got extension in meters along the bottom there and force in newtons up the side. There's a lot more that could be said about force extension graphs. And so I'm going to return to that in the second of these videos. What I want to do first though, is to consider what happens if we put springs in series and parallel. And to do that, we're going to think about the good old Newton meter. So here is a bog standard newton meter, and a newton meter can be thought of as just a spring inside a tube, and obviously that spring stretches. So if we put a force, say, of five newtons, then the little marker that's attached somewhere to the spring moves up and down, depending on the size of the force. And obviously you can calibrate that movement and read off um, a force. So basically, it's just a spring. This spring here is going to be our standard spring, and so we know that the spring constant for this spring is just going to be F over extension. What happens then if we're going to put two springs in series like this? So what we find now is that if we put on the same five Newton force here, each of our two springs is still going to stretch or still going to experience a five Newton force acting on it. And because each spring is identif identical to our test spring at the start there, they're both going to stretch the same amount as the test spring. That means that the total extension for the system is going to be 2x compared to what it was, which means that the overall value of k is going to be f over 2x, which means that k has halved. In fact, there is a formula for spring constants added together in series, which goes like this. 1 over k total equals 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. And you might remember that it's shockingly similar to the resistors in parallel formula. Let's go on now and consider what happens if we have two springs connected together in parallel. So I'm just going to set my screen up here and make this nice and big so that we can see what's going on. So here we go, two identical springs in parallel. And we're going to put the same force on them that we had before, i.e. 5 newtons. Now what you can see now is that each of the meters is reading two and a half newtons. In other words, what's happening is the force is shared out between the two springs. 
Because the springs are identical to the spring in the original example, each spring is going to extend half as much as before. Therefore, the total extension from what we had previously is going to be x over 2. And that means then that k is going to be the same force over x divided by 2. And doing your algebra on that, which means that k is going to be 2f over x. In other words, k has doubled. And just as there was a simple formula for 4 for k's in series, now we have a simple formula for k's in parallel. And it's kt or k total is equal to k1 plus k2. In the second video, we're going to look a lot more detail at the force extension graph, bringing out such interesting things as plastic in elastic regions, Hooke's law, deformation, and what is going on down at the atomic level with the bonds as materials change their shape.